you hear this, act fast. down the shades or blinds and close the drapes against flying glass. When we think about nuclear power, frightening images of the Cold War era might come to mind. But the discoveries made by Albert Einstein and his theory of relativity have led to a renewable energy technology that safely produces cost-efficient electricity. Oregon State University is one of the only universities in the country that has their own nuclear reactor designed specifically for education. We'll learn about the development of their own nuclear reactor technology, and we'll hear about grad student research in nuclear waste recycling. We'll also learn about New Scale Power, an Oregon company that is engineering and commercializing small modular nuclear reactors that can be easily transported and installed. Coming up next on Green Science Oregon. In 1939, some scientists were experimenting with transmutation of uranium. What would happen, they wondered, if they fired a neutron at a uranium nucleus, already the heaviest in nature? Why not try? So they tried. And the result? Nuclear fission. Instead of a minor change, the atom split in two. Truly a discovery to change the world. The first thing I think everybody should know is that you know, a nuclear reactor can't explode like a nuclear bomb. It just physically can't happen. I mean, a nuclear bomb is very specifically designed to, do, to blow up, you know, to explode. Uh, a nuclear reactor is just not designed to do that. I mean, so you, you can't have um, you know, the large mushroom cloud like we all picture from the Cold War happen over a, over a nuclear power station because it's physically just not able to happen. You know, we can't change the laws of physics, which is a good thing in that case. Um, but obviously, it's very difficult to escape that type of image because, you know, even as a child, um, you know, I remember in the 70s, we used to have bomb drills or air raid drills. In my, in, I don't think we do it anymore, but we did when I was a young child. And so it's a real hard image to, to, to kind of separate out from people. Nuclear energy is a, is a solution to the world energy needs. It provides an excellent option to safe, secure, steady state, clean electric power for the world. And it does so in a way that ensures a safe and stable supply to a much greater population uh, than is currently being served by dependable energy sources in the world today. Basically what nuclear energy is, is um, we were able to pull out a metal out of the ground. Um, it's you know, like any other metal you'd find in the ground, but this metal is called uranium. And there's a certain portion of uranium that has a very unique capability that we're able to actually split it in two, into two different pieces. And the, basically the effect of splitting uranium into two different pieces is able to release energy. So we were able to pull this metal out of the ground and we're able to split a large number of these uranium atoms into two pieces, which we can then capture that energy. Now, typically that energy comes out as heat and we use those, that heat in nuclear reactors to basically heat water and ultimately to boil water. And then from boiling water, you can then take the steam that's created, you know, just like you would create steam on a pot on, on top of your stove. Uh, we use that steam that we create from that heated water to basically turn very large turbines, which turn electric generators, which create electricity. Nuclear power is splitting an atom. Now, as a reference point, one uranium atom is about 14 million times stronger than one carbon atom. So what we do is we take an atom, we split it, and the enormous amount of heat that comes from splitting that atom boils the water, which spins a wheel, which provides us electricity. The, the interesting thing about um, you know, uranium is it has the, not only when it splits apart, not only does it release energy, it releases uh, two to three neutrons as well, and those neutrons can be used to then split other uranium atoms. So in essence, uh, it's largely a self-sustaining uh, reaction. A single particle starts the reaction, splitting the uranium atom. Here now is the release of energy as heat and blast. Here are powerful rays being given off, similar to X-rays. But here, here are free neutrons driven out with tremendous speed. 
And provided there is sufficient U-235 present, what science calls a critical mass, those neutrons bombard other uranium atoms, causing them to split and split still others. The result? A chain reaction. Green Science Oregon is brought to you by Oregon State University, where faculty, students, and research are powered by orange. The centerpiece of our uh, facilities here at OSU is our research reactor. Um, we do have a one megawatt research reactor here at the Radiation Center. Um, again, it's not used for power production, but it's used for teaching students, um, you know, teaching the new generation of nuclear engineers. Right now, we're in what we call one of our thermal hydraulic test facilities. Uh, we have a number of these test facilities, both some that are already in existence and some which are currently being built right now. Um, and these thermal hydraulic test facilities are basically um, small scale models of you know, advanced nuclear reactor concepts. Now we don't use any radioactive material, they're, they're, these, these scaled models are powered by just electric power because our purpose for these test facilities is to really kind of look at how they behave during both normal operations and, and during accident conditions. You know, obviously you're not want, you don't want to build a nuclear reactor in the U.S. or anywhere that would have troubles or wouldn't be able to take care of itself during an accident. So what we try to do here is try to figure out what are the different accidents that can occur and we try to impose those accidents in these test facilities uh, to basically see how the reactor performs and to make sure that no matter what we can think of from an accident perspective, the reactor will maintain itself in a safe condition. Um, and again, much of the testing that's done for that to prove those concepts is done here at OSU. So what we have here is the control panel for the advanced plant experiment facility. From this panel right here, we can control uh, things like the heaters, our, you know, our electric heaters, we can control our reactor coolant pumps, but we control different levels and different tanks. And so we were able to basically operate um, the facility from this panel. We also have the ability to program in um, different types of automatic control systems which can help us with running different types of accident scenarios. So we'll be able to push buttons on this panel to make those algorithms run to make the different accidents occur in the facility. We had some engineers come in here and basically take this original panel and all its control functions and basically digitize it so we can do many of the things that we do here on computer screens. So you can go in and you can check the, the position of different valves, you can uh, check the speed of the different pumps, uh, the amount of power being put out by the heaters uh, off of the computer screens. So we have a very um, detailed ability to really look at a, a lot of detailed information now that we didn't have in the past. The building we're sitting in right now uh, is called the Advanced Plant Experiment. And the concept here is we really took a, a Westinghouse design reactor, the Advanced Plant 1000, and you know developed a scaled model of it. Again, electrically heated. There's no radioactive material in, in this facility, and we wanted to look at um, you know what types of accidents that we could impose upon this facility and how would the reactor behave. Uh, we did an, in the early 90s is really when this facility was built and, and, and the work here was started. And you know, from the mid-90s to probably the early 2000s, we did a, a number of different types of tests. Um, primarily, uh, or, or the first set of tests was really for Westinghouse and the Department of Energy, where we kind of looked at these types of accidents for them to see how the reactor behaved. Um, and then they, were, they would be able to use that to prove the concept and ultimately um, use it for their you know, license application to the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission. This is uh, the advanced plant experiment. Uh, and again, this is a scaled model of the Westinghouse Advanced Plant 1000. Now what you really see behind me right here is in essence, as I said, a scale model. So um, you have the reactor vessel in our case, it's a, it's a pressure vessel and it's electrically heated, no radioactive material. Um, you have um, two reactor coolant pumps on either side. You have what we call a hot leg and a cold leg. We have what we call a steam generator above my head. Uh, this is where you generate the steam. Now in a real nuclear power plant, that steam that's generated would be used to generate electricity by turning some electrical turbines. However, in our case, we're not really here to generate power, but rather we're here to do research. So the steam we generate, we actually send out uh, the ceiling of the, um, of, of the building itself. But it basically models all the features that you would see in, in Advanced Plant 1000, albeit at a much smaller scale. You'll see a number of different instruments. We have pressure instruments, uh, temperature instruments, flow instruments, and, and, and basically all the different parameters that are part of this facility, we try to measure. I and mean, that's really what our, what our job is, to really understand in very fine detail what's, what's happening. Um, one of the um, things you'll see behind me is what we call a brake separator. 
One of the accidents we try to simulate here at the Advanced Plant Experiment is literally a pipe break. So if you were in a reactor and you had a pipe break, that water, that very high pressure, high temperature water would, would come out very quickly. Uh, it may actually not come out just as water. It may come out as water and steam. So we're able to model that here um, at the Advanced Plant Experiment by simulating a, a pipe break. In our case, though, we want to really measure how much of that fluid comes out of the reactor. So we'll, we want to measure how much steam comes out and how much water comes out. And this machine right behind me is what we call a brake separator. It's nothing more than separates that steam water mixture into the steam component and into the, into the water component. And then we can use the two different components to measure them separately. The unique thing about this Advanced Plant 1000 is that it's what we call passively safe. Now, if we were to have an accident in the sense that this reactor design had some sort of leak of the water, you know, that was, was to leave the reactor and the water levels start to, dr start to drop, the number of tanks we have up here represent the passive safety features of this Advanced Plant 1000. And these tanks actually are filled with water as well. And as the water would drain out uh, down in the reactor, which is below us because of some sort of leak, the water from these tanks here would then drain themselves into the reactor, which is below us, which then would be able to keep that water level above the radioactive fuel in the real reactor. And once the water level, if the water level stays above the radioactive fuel in the real reactor, then you make sure in that case that the fuel doesn't melt. There's these kind of natural processes which actually are at play in this reactor design, which we're able to keep it in a safe condition during these different accident conditions, which again makes it unique compared to the current generation of, of reactors, and at the same time makes it much, safe, much more safe as well.